Grounding and Bonding In electrical installations, there are two main types of grounding, system grounding and equipment grounding. System grounding or earthing is established at the source such as utility transformers or separately derived power sources using a grounding electrode system. The primary purpose of system grounding is to provide a common reference point for electrical equipment and systems. Equipment grounding conductors create a conductive path called the ground fault return path between the system ground and the non-current carrying metal parts of equipment. The main purposes of equipment grounding are to ensure personnel safety and protect equipment. While the code does not specify a required impedance for equipment grounding conductors, it provides tables for sizing them. The recommended maximum allowable impedance for an equipment grounding conductor is no more than one ohm measured between the outlet and the main service panel. Impedance is best tested using a ground impedance tester rather than the commonly used but less reliable three lamp tester. The term grounded conductor refers to what is commonly known as the neutral conductor while ungrounded conductor refers to the phase or line conductors. The grounding conductor specifically refers to the conductor that connects non-current carrying metal parts of equipment to the system ground. A grounding electrode is a conductive item in contact with the earth, such as a building's metal frame, also known as structural steel, a metal water pipe, a concrete encased electrode, or a rod, pipe, or plate. Structural steel is considered the best grounding electrode metal water pipes can also be used, provided they have a minimum of 10 feet of contact with the soil. A ground ring made of at least 20 feet of 2AWG copper conductor buried 2.5 feet below the surface is another option ground rods or pipes must be at least 8 feet long. If the resistance to ground exceeds 25 ohms, the code requires the installation of a second rod or pipe. Utility companies aim for a maximum ground resistance of 5 ohms. However, resistance to ground is less critical than ensuring all equipment and systems reference the same common point. If different equipment and systems do not share the same reference point, the ground resistance value alone becomes irrelevant. Grounding and bonding have distinct functions. Grounding is a connection to earth that serves three primary purposes. It provides a zero voltage reference point, protects against lightning and surge voltages, and protects against static electricity. Grounding relates to providing a reference point for voltage potential. Bonding ensures that electrical equipment and systems share the same reference point by equalizing voltage between conductive parts. Its main purpose is to eliminate voltage differences. Bonding conductive metals also creates a low impedance path for ground fault currents to return to the neutral conductor at the service entrance. Grounding alone does not protect against overload or short circuit conditions. Overcurrent protection devices like circuit breakers or fuses handle that. These devices protect against ground faults if all conductive metals are properly bonded and connected to the ground. Bonding ensures a continuous low resistance path for fault currents, allowing overcurrent protection devices to safeguard both personnel and property. Bonding is important in both electrical and telecommunication systems. In telecommunications, bonding equalizes potential differences between equipment, protecting against lightning strikes, AC electrical faults, or other electrical transients. Anything metallic that could become energized, especially in rooms like telecommunications closets, should be bonded to the same reference point as the electrical service entrance's grounding electrode system. Bonding between neutral and grounding conductors should only occur at the main service panel or power source, such as a utility transformer. This should never be done at subpanels. Grounding and bonding calculations involve four types of conductors. First, the grounding electrode conductor, which is sized according to NEC table 250.66. This conductor connects the system to the grounding electrode, like ground rods. Next, the main bonding jumper, also sized according to table 250.66, connects the neutral bus to the equipment ground bus at the main service panel. Then, there's the equipment grounding conductor, sized according to NEC table 250.122. This conductor connects non-current carrying metal parts of equipment to the system ground. 
Finally, the bonding conductor, sized according to the service conductor size and length, is used primarily in telecommunication systems to ensure potential equalization between equipment.